it's been a while since my last baking journalist video. I had this plan. I was going to do a video on needing to fail and sometimes just accepting not being perfect. And then I was hit by a car and I lost use of my wrists for a time and I separated my shoulder and I couldn't bake bread and I couldn't do journalism like I have known how to do for most of my life. And this video has had to change a little bit because I've had so much time to think. Let's do it. I am a baking journalist, Tony Ganser. Welcome back. And uh, thanks to Edible Cleveland, the food magazine, I do feel a little bit better about my amateur baking. They were very kind to come in and take some pictures of my bread and talk to me. And they said they really appreciated that I was just a, a normal guy trying to get better at bread. Even though I'm very much an amateur, that's okay. And that made me feel really good about this project. One of the ideas I've tried to champion for myself in this project has been to let go, to let go of a bread that maybe is not perfect, uh, just as I should let go of a video that's maybe not perfect, but I'm doing it to learn something, and not being perfect is part of the process. I have very high standards for myself in my journalism, and sometimes it is hard to let go, but this project was supposed to force me to do that, all in the name of learning something new. I've made it a point to use every little step in this project as a sign of growth, that I am learning something. Every little mistake, well, that's a lesson that I've learned, and then I can make the next video hopefully better, just as I can make the next loaf of bread maybe a little bit better. The breads I've stuck to are pretty basic. I'm not focusing so much on the chemistry of bread. I know a lot of people appreciate that. That's not really what I'm into right now. It's mostly just the practice of baking a basic loaf of bread and then having the family appreciate it. But the point is I'm trying to improve. Sometimes it feels like society maybe isn't as forgiving for a project that doesn't aim to be the best or the prettiest or the most fantastic baking channel ever. It's easy to get sucked into Instagram and you look at these beautiful breads. There are some really talented people out there and see their success as some sort of indictment of you, that you're not that good, so, oh, you must not be doing something right. But that's not the case at all. You're just at a different point or learning a different thing altogether. Sometimes you'll see news stories, for example, and studies telling us that social media pressure has real-world effects, either making people feel inadequate or that social media might help us as long as it's used in moderation. And that's very important, in moderation. Despite there being a lot of business consultants and uh, websites and studies saying failure is okay and, and sometimes is necessary for success, it doesn't always feel like that's embraced. There's this fear of failure and fear of being mocked or going viral for the wrong reason, assuming there's a right reason and a wrong reason to go viral. I haven't figured out the calculation yet for that. I interviewed Swiss adventurer Bertrand Picard many years ago, and he helped lead this project to build a solar airplane, and he wanted to fly around the globe with his uh, partner, Andre Borsberg, a pilot, um, only on solar power. So they would save up solar energy and the batteries during the day, and then they would fly through the night. So I was there for the first night flight of this airplane, and Bertrand Picard told me about this idea of failure and how it was all part of this journey to getting to where you want to go. Limitations are wrong limits that you inflict to yourself because you believe that you cannot do better. But it's wrong. Most of the time you can go much further than your limitations and you can reach the limits. I believe that to accomplish something big, you need the ability to cope with disappointment, with frustration and with failure. And if you accept to cope with that, then you can go beyond and you can reach success. Success comes if you try one more time than failures. 
Picard and Borsberg ultimately did make it around the world. I even saw them again when they stopped in Dayton, Ohio, which was pretty cool on their uh, on their around the world trek. Success is one more time than failure. It sounds so simple, except sometimes it's really not that simple to put it into practice. If there's a chance, a really good chance that you're going to fail, why would you put yourself out there? Why would you be willing to fall flat on your face? Even if you know a recipe is too far for you to grasp right now, why try it? Or if a story is too complex and maybe you're, you're not skilled enough as a journalist, why do it? Why do anything, really? In journalism, your missteps can be as simple as not doing your research or maybe asking the question the wrong way in a crucial moment with somebody, or you misread the room and maybe somebody just doesn't like you and you don't get the hint and you don't adjust your style and all of a sudden it's gonna be a bad day for you. Um, I've been through situations like that and I've learned through them. The only way to get through them is to try it, to learn. The best way to get through these situations is to get through these situations because living through them, that is experience you can't buy. In failing in bread baking, the idea is the same. You can follow a recipe, but so many things influence how your bread turns out. The temperature, the, the climate, uh, whether you use water or milk, how old your yeast is or your starter, uh, the time you let your dough rise. There's so many things that you can control and many that you can't. And ultimately, in the end, when you put that in the oven, you just hope it turns out okay. Having lost the use of my wrists, I still uh, wear this cast for protection. Uh, I've really had to adjust to a lot of things, and I'm very thankful to have a, a family who has supported me through this. But to bake bread, I, I still have been baking the family sandwich bread as much as I can with that help. I have a stand-up mixer that I got uh, from a late aunt, and I had to figure out how to make it. The dough was much uh, moister than I was used to in mixing all my breads by hand, so I had to adjust. And some of these loaves... Uh, were, were not good. And these were these were things I, I do not want to recreate, but I did learn something going through that process. Just like me not being able to button my shirt for a while or drive or type as fast as I would like to, our bread is going to be different a while. And sometimes when you're thrown curveballs in life and you're not going to be anywhere near perfect for a while, you just have to accept that that's reality now, and you can still learn things and still develop, but it's just going to be different. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. But we need to go through things being not perfect to become better versions of who we are. Sometimes we decide what we want to try that's new, and other times a situation is imposed on us, and we just have to figure out how to make it work the best we can. Either way, we should go with it, we should try to improve, do the best we can with what we have and try to improve the world around us because that's what we've been given and that's the opportunity we have. Thanks for watching, hopefully I'll be back to baking as I had become accustomed and also a little more efficient in my journalism soon. Until then, I'm Tony Ganser, your baking journalist. Thanks for watching and happy baking.